Hello and welcome to another episode of Game Hammer Extra, where today we're going to be finding out who is Top Gun. Released in 1989, but based on the hit 1986 film, this is one of Konami's range of LCD handheld systems that only plays one game, but nobody cared because it was cheap, it was fun, and it was top gun. The game uses the standard Konami handheld case, which we've seen before with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. The case has a delta shape with moulded foot pads on the rear to make the unit lean downward when it's laid on a table. This is a nice feature because it means the player's shadow doesn't fall over the screen when the game is laid flat. Very useful for an LCD system which requires light on the screen in order for you to be able to see what's going on. The delta shape makes the game comfortable to hold in your hands and gives easy access to the four rubber menu buttons along the bottom of the screen, plus the two large control buttons. Each game has different controls, but they usually come down to a D-pad of sorts on the left, with either one or two functions on the right-hand button. With Top Gun, that right hand button is just a giant circle, and it might as well be labelled Fire, because it's just for firing your aircraft's guns. It's a very simple system, and in many ways it's the standard way of making these LCD games. But the shape of the system is what sets Konami games apart from the likes of Tiger, Grandstand, and any of the other manufacturers. This is a basic combat flight simulator, but the execution is very refined. The game starts at a reasonable pace, and your goal is to score as many points as you can before you lose all three of your lives. Enemies will fly towards you, and it's your job to shoot them before they shoot you. Some enemies fly in through the sky, changing direction as they go, and making it quite tricky to guess where you need to place your target reticule in order to shoot them. Other enemies are ships that sail in and become easier to shoot as they get bigger. Then there are the missiles, which fly in a fairly straightforward way, but they're quick so you have to keep your wits about you if you're going to spot them in time. If any of the enemies hit you, that's when you lose a life. The graphics are nicely drawn and they give a lot of charm to the game. It's clear right from the start what everything is, and there's a surprising level of detail to both the ships and the aircraft. Even the clouds have a bit of shading to them, which is a nice touch. Given the speed that everything starts moving at, this level of detail wouldn't be necessary, but it is a very nice touch that is here. So to play, you move the target reticule using the circular D-pad, and that's actually very responsive. Firing is just a matter of tapping the huge fire button, and again, it's very responsive. As a result, controlling the game quickly becomes second nature, and when you inevitably get hit, you'll feel like you only have yourself to blame. This feeling feeds into the just one more go mentality that will quickly take hold. If you get to the end of a stage, the game gets faster. Eventually, it will become too fast for you to keep up with, at which point you'll lose all of your lives and probably swear a bit. It's the standard arcade formula, and it works very well for a handheld LCD game. The sound is basic, which is usually for the best with a handheld LCD game, because these things don't tend to contain a specialised sound chip, just a beeper. There's a beep when you hit a target, a buzz when you miss, and a more annoying buzz when it's game over. If you want a kick-ass soundtrack, you'll need to put some music on your stereo, because this thing isn't going to give you any. Again, that is probably for the best, because attempting the Top Gear soundtrack via a beeper just isn't going to work out. All in all, this is an excellent LCD game. It's definitely in my top 10 of LCD games, if not in the top 5. The simple game loop and the just one more go mindset that it invokes is impressive. If I had this game back in the 80s, I would have been very happy with it. And even now, I admit, I'll just pick it up from time to time to have a few quick tries. It can't compete with a modern combat flight sim, but for what it does, it does it well. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. It's a quick look at a rather fun LCD game. Actually, I had a lot of fun playing this. It's not bad for what is typically just a high score chase of um, finding out where all of the enemies are and blasting them. It's actually a pretty decent game. I really enjoyed it, so I hope you did as well. But uh, until next time, please do remember to like, comment and subscribe because it does help fight off the demon algorithm that YouTube is employing to destroy channels. But here we are. Thank you very much. Take care. Happy gaming. Bye bye.
If you like the show, please consider supporting me on Patreon. It really does help create future videos. That's patreon.com slash Zoe Kirk Robinson. And I've got an extra special thanks going out to Chief89, Sam Yates, Retro Mickey82, Mo Henry, and George Botterini. Thank you so much, guys. Thank <laughs> you.